Hello and welcome back to the very final episode of the plasticity to game object or plasticity for games uh, tutorials. Now this is a practice run that I did. Now I wasn't completely happy with uh, all of the UV results like there's some stuff here. I have done a bonus tutorial if you want to... Um, Go and follow along that on optimizing the UVs. Um, but if you don't want to, that's fine. You'll still be able to follow along with this tutorial anyway. Now, at the end of the last episode, we baked our normals and ambient occlusion in Marmoset. Um, so what we're going to do um, quickly is go back over to Marmoset and bake another couple of uh, maps. So we'll go... Um, over to Marmoset Toolbag. There we go, and Marmoset Toolbag. So uh, we've got all of our normals here. Um, in the other video, we did uh, show how to get rid of artifacts if you show up with those. Now you go to Bait, bait Project and down in Configure. Okay, you want to have Normals, Normals Object, Position, Curvature, Thickness, Ambient Occlusion. You can turn Material ID off. And you just really want to turn that off and then in Bake Project, we just want to bake all of those. And um, we will be using those in um, Substance Painter. So back in Substance Painter, um, we're going to start a new project. Okay, and we'll select Document Resolution 2048. Now, my computer may chug a little bit if I stick things in 4K because I've only got a 2070. Um, and we're going to go to episode 3 final. Actually, uh, back in Blender, we do need to just export the only the, the low poly of um, this. So we're going to go to Shisha Low. Uh, we'll turn off the high poly and just select everything there. And export FBX. And we've got Shisha 2 there. And we're going to go Shisha Low Texturing. Okay, and that's got our vertex colors as well, which is what we're going to need um, to bake in Substance. So I'm just going to make sure that Selected Objects Only is selected, and I'm going to quickly export that FBX. And back over in Substance Painter, um, we're going to import that um, uh, mesh. What I might quickly do is just show you this. Uh, we've got document resolution 2048, normal map format, OpenGL, okay, because um, I'm using the Unity HD, uh, you can change it to DirectX, whatever you want. Um, I like to use OpenGL because then I don't have to convert them back in Blender. Um, use the UV tile workflow, no, we don't want to do that, no, we don't want to do that. Um, Everything is as it should be. Okay. And so I'm going to import this low poly mesh. And we, we just want to discard that because I've already saved that in the past. Okay. So we've got our low poly mesh here. You can see all of the, uh, the triangles almost. Um, and what we want to do now do is I've got all of... And I'll just set this up to be a little bit easier to work. Because I'm not really going to be using any materials from here really. Uh, but I'm going to be using smart masks. So I just wanted to free up this real estate here. So I've got my properties here, my layers here, my asset library here, uh, and everything else is, as, it, as it normally is. Okay. So uh, first of all, we only want to bake one thing. And we're going to go use low poly as high poly. We'll just turn everything off on both materials. And just turn the ID back on. And then make sure that under ID we've selected vertex color. And let's double check that. Yep. Bake selected textures. Okay. Return to painting mode. Now we've got our color IDs. Okay. And then what we want to do is we want to um, import our textures. So we're going to go to import resources. And we're going to go add resources. And we're going to go and find all of our... Um, Baked maps final. Okay, and we're going to import them 
to the current session. Okay, we're going to go and select all of these. You just drag and drop down and change that all to texture. And then we're going to import them. Now they should, once they've imported, show up over here. Um, so what I might do is just bring that over here for a moment. Okay. And change it to uh, large for a moment. And so we can get this back over. Um, so if I just hover over that, we can see the bowl ends over there. So we're on bowl now. So we just want to drag our materials in. So we know that that's the normal map. Um, we know that that's the AO. Okay. And we're going to do this for both materials. I'll just uh, fast forward this little section. Curvature. Object normal, which is the same as world space normal. Position. And that's the thickness, which is down here now. And we're not using height, bent normals, or opacity in this instance. And I'll just do that for the other material. I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so that's all done. And as you can see, uh, we now have our normals up to date. A few artifacts here and there. Obviously, you can spend more time on these and, and everything like that. But once we've got our textures layered on, those artifacts won't really be noticeable. Um, uh, even close up in a lot of cases. So um, let's start with our bowl. Okay, so I'm just going to get this asset browser back over. Get this asset browser back over here. And back into list mode. And there we go. Okay, so looking at both of our materials, we've got all of our maps in there, including our ID map uh, for the pipe. Okay, but let's start with the bowl. We really want to just get rid of this main layer. And I'm just going to turn the pipe off for now because we're just dealing with this bowl. And let's add a fill layer. Let's bring the metallic all the way up uh, we were on the wrong material damn it let's get rid of that on bowl we're going to add a fill layer and bring the metallic all the way up this is going to start to be our did it again okay let's bring the metallic all the way up I can't have done it a third time okay and looking at that from a distance We'll put that on triplanar projection. And you can see these artifacts. Um, but as time goes on, they should uh, be going away. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my um, reference board again. Okay. Um, if you remember this. And I'm going to sample some colors from this particular picture. Okay, so we'll keep that over here. And for my base color, I really want a kind of neutral. We can sample any of these. And then we're going to make it a bit more neutral. Okay. And this is our base brass. And how's our normal map looking? Not too bad. Okay, so I think that's a, a decent base color for the brass. And what we want to do is we want to uh, shift D or control D in this and duplicate this. Okay, and we're going to sample another color from this uh, using the color picker. And I don't know if I want to go lighter or darker. It doesn't really matter. Okay, and I think that's good. So you'll see what we're going to do here. We're going to go right click on uh, the fill layer copy. Okay, and we'll call this uh, base color. And we'll call this um, second color okay so i mean we can go and you can slap on a material right 
feel free to do that. Um, the reason I'm texturing it this way is we're going to get a lot more control over... Um, if we come down to this guy here, you can see this uh, anisotropic uh, noise. Now, you can get that on a few like materials. You could probably search the internet. But what we're going to basically do here is we're going to make a, a material like that for cylindrical objects that you can make into a smart material and reuse at your leisure. So um, that's really what we're going for. Um, so I'm going to just keep that on the screen. And what we're going to do here is we're going to add a black mask, like I said. And you'll see the black mask. It's like Photoshop. It completely blacks out the... Um, the other, um, the, the second color. So if I turn that off, nothing happens. Then we're going to go down here and we're going to add another fill. Inside of this fill, under the properties, under grayscale, I'm going to type in Annie. So we've got this anisotropic uh, noise straight line. And you'll see that that didn't really work out that much. So we want to change the tiling from UV projection. Now there's a few different options. If we go try planner, you'll see what happens. Now what we really want to do is we want to improve, increase the tiling. So we've got something like that. And we're looking at scratch marks. Okay. And you'll see if we do try planar, try planar kind of tries to envelop it. Um, but you'll see that doesn't quite work. So the two options that you may want to use are planar. Or cylindrical and they've got pros and cons for each so if we use planar you'll see what happens there and you get a bit of stretching over here um, which may not matter too much because we're gonna build this up by layers um, and as we go um, what I really want to do we come down here to, to our first color and make sure the color has got highlighted blue and we're just gonna change the roughness up uh, down a little bit and with this one, we're going to change the roughness up a little bit. Um, and we're going to go back to our anisotropic noise, which is underneath our black mask. And we're going to bring the tiling. We're just going to play with that a little bit. And I don't think I like planar. I'm going to try cylindrical. So we're looking at this from a distance. And look, this is just our first, our first base. Um, if we tile it too much up to 32, it doesn't look quite right. So I think something like 17. And I just want to go between planar and cylindrical again. UV doesn't really work. Uh, warp. No. Actually, what's the settings for warp? No, we don't want that. Uh, I think we'll go with, I think we'll go with cylindrical for this. Okay. And I'm going to get that off screen now. I'm going to keep it to the side if I need to sample colors again. And under this, we're going to, on this one here, we're going to add a little bit of pos positive height. One thing going back to our uh, cylindrical, we do need to go up here and actually bring the center of the cylinder to the center of our object with the gizmo. And try to get it as central as you possibly can. And there, that looks a lot better. Um, okay, so we've got our base there coming along nicely. I think I want to bring this height uh, down a little bit. I'm going to go 0 0.015 and then on this one we're going to call it 0 0.1 minus 0 0.015 Okay so we're starting to get this base material uh, plotting along. I think we need to actually just bring that scale uh, on the noise down a little bit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a uh, 
filter and we're going to go filter empty we're going to choose blur and we're going to choose blur slope and you'll see that that does this but what we're really doing is we're going to really just crank that all the way down just so we get this little bit of uh noise in there so it looks a bit um I just really want to go and I feel like there's something wrong with the normal map but we can deal with that later because we're texturing right now okay so we've got that there and that's our basic um you can see our really basic brass color there's a little bit of height to it there's a little bit of um roughness variation to it and i think we want to add um another filter below that one oh, not a fill another f filter below that one see what happens when we turn our anisotropic noise off another filter below this one and i want to just call that a blur just a regular old blur okay and we're going to bring that all the way down and what we're really getting if we turn that off does nothing so we want it like really 0 0.01 okay it's just giving a very faint blur and we'll probably even take that one down a little bit and I think that's good okay so we've got our um base layer now everything that we do going forward is going to be based on upon this as we build that up i'm going to turn the pipe off as we build this up so what you can do um if you remember that to rename uh choose both we can make a folder and we can call this uh bronze or brass i might just call it bronze um brushed and then i just go pj which is my initial so it's easy to search for later whack it in there whack both of those in there and then you can go create a smart material and there you go bronze brushed pg brass old cylindrical i've done a cylindrical so if we turn this off and go brass old cylindrical i've made a similar material in the past okay so we'll go bronze brushed pg turn it back on and I really want to just have a little play with the tiling of this. I think that's fine because I think when we bring it up to 4K, and excuse me if my computer starts to chug, it's going to be okay. Starting to build up this uh, brass texture. Okay, obviously the UVs are not perfect um, and, and you can do a better job of those. Um, like I said earlier on, it's not a UV uh, exercise per se, but once we start to build up our textures, this should be all right. Um, what we want to do next is really um, start to build up our... So we've got our bronze brushed, and then we want to add a paint layer, okay, with an anchor point, okay. Actually, we'll call this... Um, layer uh, one we'll call this uh, detailing okay and then we're going to make another paint layer called no actually we'll do we'll do one at a time so we'll call this detailing okay and if we paint on there you can see what we're getting um, and we really want to mess with our brush set settings so I think the brush is fine um, on our paint layer we want our let me get rid of that 
Okay, I'm just going to go to masks because that's what I'll be using next. Okay, um, on our paint layer, we're going to bring the height down. We'll turn the color off for now. And we'll turn the roughness off for now. And the metal. And if we bring the height right down and press control and control and right click and move your mouse to the right and left and you will um change the size and if you go up and down uh you'll change the hardness so we want the hardness to really not be at one and we want this size to be a bit smaller um and you're starting to get some detailing and just like in photoshop if you hold down shift you get a line okay so you can see that we're starting to get a detail in there. Now, if we look at this practice run I did, I did this uh, color in there. And if we look at something like, uh, which one is it? This one here, we've got this detailing. We're not going to do any of this floral, floral design, but I do kind of like the way that that's embossed in there. And if we look at some of these other ones, they're all different. This one's all sort of like uh, height curvature with uh, sort of, dirt in the cavities which is a cool effect as well but I'm, I'm going to go for this one we were sort of following along with this one earlier on in the series so we'll stick with that one and we're going to go like that so what I'm going to do is I'm really for my paint color we're going to turn that back on I'm going to sample uh, that from the other screen and we're going to I don't think about that one. Let's have a look here. And I think we'll take it down to a blue and a very dark blue. Okay. And with our roughness, um, we're going to make it quite smooth. And oh, I don't like that blue. Uh, let's make it a sort of a greeny, a dark greeny. Yeah, that's more like it and we're going to make it even more dark than that and one thing that you can do one little trick if we come into our display settings and we turn on activate post effects and come down to activate color profile okay we can actually bring in a lot now i found this one online somewhere but this is like a ue4 logarithmic or standard uh, ASUS LUT so uh, and what we might do go up the top let's I just like to like sort of work in a environment um, where I might be able to visualize our product a little bit better or our, our final product a little bit better and how it might look in the game engine as we're doing it so we'll bring down the environment um, opacity Okay, and take the blur down a little bit. So now we've got this kind of this kind of room. Actually, I might go and import an HDRI as well. Okay, I've imported one of my favorite um, HDRIs to work with. Um, and we're just going to bring the exposure up. And on the LUT, we'll make the white point a bit lower. And then bring the exposure down a little bit now and then we'll make the hdri environment as camera okay okay i feel like we're working with something i can kind of visualize it better in the game engine now um, so we're going to increase the size of our brush and we still haven't really finished with our brush settings. So um, if you see up here, you can draw what the brush is going to be like. So I want the size jitter to be a little bit and then we're getting like more of a rough. Um, I think I want to turn the hardness down as well. Now, flow jitter, angle jitter, position jitter, we want to slightly, we don't want to, we don't want to like over 
exemplify this effect. We don't want to over... Um, Okay, and then if we draw on here, you can see that we're getting a little bit of a jitter. Um, I do want to come back to the detailing and bring the height down a bit. Um, and let's just do with a flow jitter, see if what that does. And I also want to bring the color. I want to bring the color in, I don't know. Um, Maybe over to more of a grey colour. And roughness. A bit more rough. Okay. Starting to get something that I'm happy with. Okay. But we're going to keep building up our layers. So we've got our detailing. And I'm just going to put brackets paint. Because this will start to get a little bit complex. And then you won't um, uh, know where you are. Um so for our next layer, we're going to use another fill layer. And this is when we're going to start using our um, smart masks. And we're just going to have to have a play around with this. Um, so I might bring this over a little bit and just go medium. Okay, so let's try with, uh, let's type in edges. Okay, uh, edge is strong, edge is uber. Edge is dusty. Let's try with edge is dusty and see what happens. And with our paint layer, we want to add a anchor point. Okay, and then when we go into our mask editor over here, I want to remove that, uh, remove the, uh, remove mask. Okay. And we're going to try, I think concrete edges. I think that should do. And we're going to turn on, we're going to make the color on this one. I'm just going to sample, um, some, green and we'll make that a bit darker okay and we're going to add a we're going to go to our mask editor and we're going to add a filter and we're going to call that a blur just a regular blur and we're going to bring the blur intensity down to just a little bit and Actually, I don't even think I want to use, I want to make my own mask on that. So let's remove the mask. No, 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 that, that's fine for now. And we're just going to bring our height metallic all the way up. Roughness a little bit. I'm going to bring our height down a little bit. And seeing as we've added an anchor point to our detailing thing, we're going to go into our mask editor. Okay, and we're going to come down over here to micro details and we're going to add micro height micro normal come down right down to the bottom micro normal ankle points and you just choose the detailing paint and reference channel let's just bring this over a bit so we can see it better reference channel micro normal we're going to reference the normal micro height we're going to reference the height now when we come down to our detailing paint we should be starting to get, if we just make that a little bit stronger um, on our mask editor, global balance, global contrast. Now if we come down to detailing, we should be starting to get some, some of that. It's a little bit hard to see in 2K. Let's just turn it to 4K. I know it's going to slow down. But you'll start to see what the details are. And let's just take that off. And then let's make that like a paler green. Um, okay. And detailing paint. 
and this is a way that we can hide our seams as well okay so looking looking at that it's starting to look okay i'm still not quite happy with um that there however let's go to our fill layer and let's just bring that down a little bit okay and we're just going to call this um slight damage and let's make another fill layer and i actually want to bring this fill layer down to just above the bronze okay and we're going to add a black mask okay and i just want to add a bit more detail to our actual bronze texture um so on our mask we're going to add another fill layer okay and you're starting to see uh some of the detailing there coming through on our fill layer we're just going to type in bnw and vanelli bnw there we go black and white spots and we just want to drag that into there okay and we want to make this one a triplanar projection and we're going to pull the balance right down like that and tiling like that okay so we're going to get that and we're going to actually um those flex that i was trying to make before that's what we're going to do here we'll bring the tiling down a little bit we'll add a bit of a uh, filter to this one and we'll make it a slope blur blur slope and we'll bring the intensity down okay so we're getting these flecky shapes all right and then we will just see if we what happens when we change the intensity divider and then just pull the intensity up a bit i think a 10 should do okay and we pull that down okay and then we're going to go to the actual um, color of this and we're going to i'm going to sample from that other screen these kind of darker green flecks and we're going to pull the roughness up on that and the height in and we're starting to get some of this um, more um, of that as well and actually if i bring that back up and no that's fine we'll bring that under there okay and let's just play with the balance a bit and we'll bring bring the height back in like as with everything you always go a little bit more than what you're supposed to do because you're trying to visualize it but you forget to dial it back in so i'm going to dial that in and make sure that the metallic on this one is up and also we can maybe mess with one of our we can go divide or um, replace difference just play with a few of these inverse divide nope uh, overlay I think just sticking with normal actually is the way to go and we'll just bring this color to being a little bit more green and if you want to add some variation to that color as well if we click on this and we just type in gradient and we just choose this gradient here uh, on the base color um, we can sample three very uh hang on on the base color we want to sample three different greens i'll bring this over here so you can see what i'm sampling so we'll sample a darker green and we'll sample an even darker green and we will sample A lighter green like that 
and then image inputs we just want to get like a concrete well let's just type in grunge um, and we want something that's relatively non-contrasty so I think something like that and then we can take this off again and what we're really doing it's a bit hard to see here so maybe if we um, bring the balance of our black and white spots up you'll be able to see and turn the blur off um, on this color if we hover over it you can see we're getting this uh, gradient here I might even bring that up to be a bit more like that and if we just mess with the balance a bit you'll get different effects and let's go back and um on our black and white we'll turn our blur slope back on and on our back we'll bring that balance right back down so we've just got a few chips and on this we want our tiling oh we want a triplanar pro a triplanar projection Oh, it's not on that actually, it's on, try, oh, here we go, tiling. And I think that's starting to look okay. So we've got that, we've got our detailing brush, and we're going to do another uh, layer of edge damages. Okay, so second damage. I'm giving these silly names now. Fill layer. And we're going to go back to our um, let's see if I type in PJ have I made anything. Stylized cavities. No, that one really doesn't work in the context of this. Okay, and then Let's go dirt. I kind of like the look of that. Let's see how it comes out. Yeah. Okay, but we want to bring the uh, the level right down. So we've got that, and then we're going to make this uh a bit more of a brown color this is build up so we're gonna have it raised slightly but on our thing we're gonna blur it again um not a fill a filter and we'll go blur slope again and also make it a factor of 10 and bring the intensity down and then we're going to bring the height down not by much roughness is going to be it's going to be a little bit more rough and we actually want to change that to more of a reddy brown i think um, and darker uh, and we also want to like make it not so and then let's apply this to the mask builder and let's go micro details true true and anchor points detailing uh normal normal anchor points detailing uh height height now our detailing brush should start to add some of these details but it'll only add it in places hmm what have we done there that's height i 
Okay, and I really want to bring some of this uh, down a bit. Um, I really just want to rein this in. We're just building up a few layers. Okay, and on this we really want to turn the roughness off, I think, altogether. And the metallic. And the normal. And yep, yeah, that's and same on this one. We want to turn the roughness off and the metallic. I know we got the metallic set to one on that. Um okay. So I really want to get to how's this pipe part looking I really want to get to um, detailing this you can mess around with this like I say and you can get to uh, doing more UVs and things like that but now that we've set up all of our brushes um, and we can add more layers um, going forward we've got our detailing brush which does this and I still want to fix that up I'm just going to turn um, anti-aliasing on see if that fixes some of the jaggies and let's turn that off again because it's completely ruining the uh, performance of um, actually the performance is starting to crack down so I'm going to go down to 1k for a bit and that should be working okay now um, we'll go back up to 2k in a bit I just don't want the and there you can see it you're getting these edges um, of this actually I do want to turn the roughness on on that um, and I want to see what happens when I actually paint on the base Yep, that looks okay. Um, alrighty, so now that we've got our... We're on 1K mode because our, our layers are starting to slow the computer down and my poor old 2070 doesn't really handle it. Uh, if anybody wants to give me a 40 series card, um, DM me and uh, I'll give you my address. Okay. Um, so what we want to do now is turn on symmetry and we want to use radial symmetry. We've got our detailing brush on and we've got radial symmetry on and we want to set our count to about thing. We want to set this to 360 actually. Set our count to about uh, six. Let's just go 16. How's that doing performance wise? And then we want to set it to, I believe, mirror Y. And we want to set our center like we did before. You press uh, Q to bring up the gizmo. And we really want to just zoom into our pipe here. And bring that gizmo. Actually, we're going to have to bring it down to the base. Um, it's not going to let us. So I just want to line this up with the center as best I can. Okay, I think that's more or less good. Okay, and we're going to bring in our... Um, and this is where we can use it to start to cover up the seams. And actually in 1K mode, it's quite easy to see the seams. So we can bring that around like that. 
I just want to make sure tessellation isn't turned on. Yeah, let's turn tessellation off. That's probably slowing us down. Uh, okay, I've changed the uh, recording to 1080p, so that should uh, speed things up. So excludes excludes the uh, drop in resolution, but it will help us along. Okay, so I'm just going to get the eraser and just no actually i'm just going to keep painting uh you guys will get the picture Okay, I've gone back down because my computer just cannot handle recording in that level of detail. Um, so what we'll do here, we'll come along the seams. And we'll just start building up some shapes. Okay, I'm not copying from anything traditional or anything like that and the good thing about the proceduralism of our um these textures up here and we'll, we'll build more that are linked to the uh this layer later on is that we'll get a, a variation for each uh line and i might just bring up the size jitter ever so slightly um there we go. And we're starting to get our variation and our position jitter. Let's just test that out. Yeah. Okay. So um, I might bring this just down to eight for now. And it just keeps changing the angle as well. And we'll... A little bit of repetition. I may speed this bit up. Okay, so there we have our um, and I think I want to change that from a blur to a slope blur. And bring the intensity down. roughness back in bring the color down and bring the height right down or 
maybe just bring it up a little bit. And it's gonna go 0.001. Bring the color back in. And bring the metallic up. So there you got it. We've got, um, this is mostly done. Now we need to work on our pipe okay so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to go to one of our libraries and find a fabric um actually first of all we'll, we'll um we're going to our pipe material and we'll find a stainless steel Anisotropic, no, metal, let's just have a look at our different metals, aluminium, this one here, this nice aluminium brush, okay, we're going to add that to a folder called uh, aluminium or aluminium, and we're going to do by UV projection okay and we're gonna go add a mask with a color selection we're gonna pick our color and we're gonna pick this white color here and then we're gonna go back to our material and we're gonna rotate it by 90 degrees and then we're gonna add the tiling up and you'll start to see that every single one is on that angle and that's only if you followed the uh optimizing the uv's uh bonus tutorial because uh in the original tutorial we did not get that effect and then we're going to add another folder and we're going to call this one fabric okay and we're going to go in here and we're going to go fabric and I think let's try this one put that in our fabric folder add mask with a color selection pick a color green uh, I'm not sure about this one let's bring up the tiling let's make the color darker actually that's not too bad um we'll give it a maybe a dark blue something like that i kind of like that let's bring our texture down to 1k because starting to chug again okay and then we really want to add one more folder. Wood. Okay, let's find a wood material. I want something kind of dark like this. Yeah, that'll do. And we're going to put that in there. Okay, we're going to add mask with color selection. Pick a color, red. And as you can see, that's not on the right plane. So we're going to go to the wood and we're going to rotate this by 90 degrees. And if you remember, we UV'd that quite well. Uh, let's just increase the tiling a little bit. Okay, and let's take off the height, I think, for this one. Okay, let's see what they both look like together. Well, it's starting to come together, okay, and what we really want to start doing is start adding dirt layers or, or, or like dust layers and stuff like that. So sticking to our pipe, we'll turn the bowl off. We can close all of these folders um, and we'll come over to our masks and we're going to go dirt and just see how that one goes. Okay, and we're going to bring the color right down. And with the roughness, we're going to bring the roughness up. 
okay and we're going to set it to we're going to set this to mul to multiply uh, nope we're going to set this to normal and add mask with color selection and I'm going to pick the uh, green pick the green and pick the red I'm going to bring actually we're going to bring this all the way down okay we're going to add another fill layer and this time we'll choose uh, dirt cavities and that's going to get in our little cavities there we're going to go to the mask builder and we're going to change the contrast lower it down and we're going to change the level we're going to make it up we're going to change the color to a dirty color down a bit and we're going to add a blur to this let's see what happens if we delete the sharpen okay I think that's okay let's see what it looks like with the bowl oh we're getting our beautiful highlights coming through okay i really want to uh, maybe go onto the bold texture i really want to get these edges right here on the slight damage um so i don't know what it is the mask editor let's go go global contrast Global balance. There we go. We're getting it in there. Uh, global blur. Actually, let's bring the global balance up and bring the global blur. And slightly. And I think I want the color to be darker. But less pronounced. and global balance up a bit okay we're starting to get some we'll take the blur off and you can keep layering these up guys and i'll probably do that after this video um Okay, and we really want to start adding some dust uh, to this as well. So I'm going to bring down this down to 1K uh, for the sake of the tutorial. We'll turn the pipe off. Hopefully that's working. And let's just do a dirt layer on this one. Okay, that's quite nice. Go to the mask editor and bring the balance down. global blur okay we're just going to give this a very soft color we're going to turn our metal height normal off and just pump the roughness on this one and let's give it a okay and then we're going to do another layer it's all about building up layers um and we'll do dust soft see how that looks yep 
and really what we want to do is just make this a very soft color and go to our mask editor bring down our global balance increase our global contrast so that's the final result this is rendered out in marmoset toolbag and edited in davinci resolve um, i hope you learned something i certainly learned something about making tutorials through this process anyway thanks for watching if you made it this far much appreciated see ya